So when I went for therapy, right, and also see if you do go for therapy, maybe hang back on telling people you're going for therapy. I didn't tell a lot of people at all, maybe like, but I told some some of the people I told were like quite good friends, and I got quite a lot of kickback from it because I wasn't anxious or depressed when I went for therapy. I was actually in an all, I was mentally stable. I wouldn't say I was in a really good place because I wasn't. I was having flashbacks to stuff from my childhood and stuff. Um, and I was also, I was going through a phase where I was feeling really unconfident with women. And I was feeling really unconfident from just like, I wasn't drinking as much anymore. So like I wasn't going out as much anymore. So I wasn't in as much, I was still coaching in person. So in a gym environment, coaching people I was quite confident. But see, like going out to pubs because I wasn't relying on alcohol anymore. I was going through a wee phase where I wasn't feeling as confident and I was very hyper aware of it. However, I mainly went for my future self because I didn't feel, I'd never been in a healthy relationship and I felt like I didn't know how to fix that and I felt like any rule, I was only, I wasn't going to get, I wasn't ever going to be capable of a healthy relationship unless I went for therapy. Now, what a lot of people took from that, like close friends was like, you don't have struggles with women. You don't struggle with dating. And I'm like, one, you don't know what goes on in my head. So how do you know that? And two, I didn't struggle with like attracting women. I didn't, I don't feel like I'm ugly. In fact, I think I'm very good looking. Can on. Anyway, I don't, nah, be honest, I don't, I think I'm a, a catch. Anyway, I didn't struggle with any of that. When I worked in hospitality, I didn't struggle with any of that. What I struggled with was ever being vulnerable with a woman. And what that led me to do was only ever get get near women that I wasn't actually capable, capable of being vulnerable with or capable of feeling vulnerable with because I wasn't, I, I don't feel like I, was actually like I wasn't in love with them but that was through my own insecurities because if I attracted a woman and got into a relationship with a woman that I was actually in love with I would I would have malfunctioned like I did the first time I was in a relationship and the pain I went through after that of just being riddled with anxiety for like 12 to 18 months I was felt so burned from that, not from the person, just from the, the experience. Because I think I said it on that podcast, it would be it could have been anyone. The first person I fell in love with, that was always going to happen because I had fucking shit to deal with from my childhood and stuff. So like people don't under. You can tell you can tell people that are self aware and get it. And that was also when I like so I'm in a, like a relationship now. I don't want to speak too much about it. Um. But like I could only be with someone also now. Not only that it's a healthy and it's a that I'm like obviously interested, like I'm actually in love with them. But someone that gets that part of me. Because if they don't get that part of me, it's fucked. Do you know what I mean? Because you still have it. You start it, it you don't fix it, you just understand it now. So you stop like making the mistakes you've done before because you can't you don't completely change yourself you understand yourself um and you like that does then change things and change the decisions you make but it's not necessarily about fixing everything anyway yeah so like it's not so i wasn't in a bad place but it was the best time to do it because i could think rationally about things and it was for future me because what happened to me in that first breakup could have easily and would have happened to me again if I got in a vulnerable situation again. But I think I would have just completely avoided it, which also isn't good. What? Where's the growth in that? Like just avoiding painful things. The pain avoidance is just like more avoidance down the line to me. That's what I think happens. Um, and I'm very conscious of this podcast not being 
something where I quote other podcasts. Because you know, I think that's what every podcast is just now. There's very little people actually just like talking about their life. It's like, oh, I heard this in a podcast. Let's talk about that. Well, we quote, well, we just quote some other podcasts. I heard this guy talk about this on a podcast. So that like therapy do it one of the one of the things i'm most proud of this year is i've not just like i think i've like 20 people that have messaged me i've like sent quite a rec a lot of recommendations to paul but i doubt he can take all of these people on i don't know if he has took any of these people on four of my friends have went to therapy um and i'm not saying i'd like four or five clients of mine have went for therapy this year don't know if they would have went if they didn't work with me or whatever but even just putting it out there, that's probably one of the things I'm proud of, the most proud of this year is the fact that I've had an impact on people to go to therapy and I'd honestly, unless, like, you know, obviously I have a bad therapist, but same way I'm talking about everything, like, choose, don't don't just choose your PT based off of an Instagram post, go and fucking listen to them like people do with me, they listen to me for talk utter shite about all sorts before they come on with me so try find a good therapist and i'm going to try have some therapists on next year because it's something i definitely want to dive into quite a lot but yeah 